Thanks for staying with us here on TVC News. Now, in efforts to complement President Bola Tinobu's uh, commitment to leverage the domestic utilization processing and international exports of gas resources, a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Infrastructure Bank and Femadec, a transport company operating compressed natural gas in Nigeria. This move is aimed at aligning with the sustainability goals and to launch the clean energy program. You would recall that President Palatinovo earlier approved the establishment of the presidential compressed natural gas, uh, the initiative in furtherance of commitment to easing the impact of fuel subsidy removal on Nigerians by reducing energy costs. We provided the buses uh, with our technical partner TLD and uh, CNG Tech. We did the conversion together. So again, we are currently running uh, 20 CNG buses with Lamata. We are the only person com company that is doing that presently, and that is why TIB has found us worthy to partner with us for our own initiative and our courage to invest in, uh, to, uh, to have this earlier investment. Now that the government has removed for first subsidy, the use of CNG has become more important, and that is why this agreement is very, very key, especially within the district of Lagos, where we have so large number of commuters daily. So putting 500 CNG buses on our corridor in Lamata is going to enhance uh, operations and, and help minimizes a lot. And we actually look forward to doing that. This would not only reduce the impact of uh, subsidy removal, but would also support the energy transition agenda of the government to um, towards the climate um, action and net zero um, commitment of the government. So we all have to work together to achieve this. This is our own contribution as TIB towards supporting the government initiative and we call on every other person to join the move. The Rotary Club has donated a sick bay to Olusosun Primary School in Ikeja as well as a borehole to provide por portable water to the school and the community. Speaking to newsmen, the district governor of the club emphasized the need to encourage healthy living and ensure children don't fall ill while in school. The club believes embarking on such community projects will ensure residents prioritize their health and well-being while also contributing to the society. Donated sewing machines, stitching machines, uh, buttonhole machines and all kinds of machines that enable the students to sew and make dresses. They also learned how to make soaps, liquid soap, disinfectants, uh, washing soaps, and even beads. In fact, the dresses they made there, just that I didn't know how to change, I could have just put on one of them. And we felt the pupils in the environment needed good health to be able to even study, sit and, and learn. So that is why we have come up with this type of project. We build projects here on a yearly basis, uh, and it's a, it's, it's a project that is impacting the lives of the puppies and the community at large. These days we don't just want to train our children in going to school, they should also make use of their hands. Having something to do outside going to school is something that is very beneficial. I'm a graduate, I have masters and I've never worked for anybody. So getting to learn how to do something on your own for future purpose is the whole idea. A lawmaker representing Wamba Akwanga Nasarawa Egon Federal Constituency of Nasarawa State, Jeremiah Umaru, has distributed fertilizers and knapsack sprayers to 1,000 farmers, including widows, to boost crop production. The distribution which took place at the Akwanga local government is targeted at reducing poverty and hunger among natives. Godwin Aguam reports. The production of crops in subsistence and commercial quantities are essential for human consumption and existence. To obey our... With the commencement of the wet season in the north central part of the country, farmers have returned to their farmlands. But the inability to purchase fertilizers and control pests for improved yields is a huge setback to achieving a good harvest. This distribution of fertilizers and knapsack sprayers to 1,000 farmers is the brainchild of the member representing Wamba, Akwanga, and Nasaragon constituency at the House of Representatives. The aim is to boost crop production and ensure food sufficiency, which is in line with the federal government's policy on food security. 
The member is giving out these fertilizers and inputs to its constituents at no cost. Giving them these uh, fertilizers and the spray machine is to, for me, one is to help them in uh, their farming activities, especially at a period or uh, at a moment like this where things are very um, difficult. And uh, of course, I told them uh, they should not sell it because some will just see it as an avenue to get and sell. But they should put it into proper use. Other further lawmakers who grace the event are optimistic that the move by the lawmaker is one way of mitigating poverty in the country. This dividends, our palliative has come to so, the people of his constituency at this a material time of their needs. You know, this, uh, farming season and all the fertilizer and other farm equipment, they are very, very key. So I am happy. The distribution of the inputs is timely for farmers in the constituency and will enhance production. So by now, he has proved to us that he is a member that will bring achievement to us in terms of bringing fertilizer and farming tools to us. For Maryam Ayabuga, who is a widow, this gesture has brought sukkah to her. I have, I, have, I have a small plot, thank God, as a widow. My husband left a small plot for me. I am going to utilize it in this very plot so that it will benefit me and my children. This move by the federal lawmaker will bring about a bountiful harvest and reduce poverty in the state. Godwin Aguam, TVC News, Akwanga. Nigerians have been taxed on the need to protect and preserve their culture for generations yet unborn. This came to, four, to the fore at the grand finale of the 2023 annual Oshun Oshubo Festival. TVC News correspondent Rafiu Hamid reports. Oshun, an annual festival in Oshubo, usually in the month of August. The festival is believed to have a history of more than 700 years. It is a 14-day festival which begins with the traditional cleansing of Oshobo, known as the Wopopo, lighting of 500-year-old 16-point lamb, known as Atupolo Jumeri Dinogun, among others. Here is the grand finale of this year's celebration of the festival. Commercial activities are at its peak as people use the opportunity to buy a number of items including beads. At about 11 o'clock in the morning, the votary maid stepped out of the palace, accompanied by Oshun worshippers and thousands of people. On her way to the group, she made stop over to pay homages to some ancestral compounds, as tradition demands. She arrived at the group after about an hour. Then follows the arrival of the Atauj of Oshobo land, Obajimo Lanipoko, his wives, chiefs, among others. He used the occasion to pray for the state and Nigeria at large. The state governor also attended the festival for the first time. He came alongside some members of his cabinet. A renowned cultural enthusiast, Nikkei Okundai, speaks on why the annual celebration attracts both local and foreign tourists. Here. They are coming from Brazil, from different parts of the They come here to solve their problem. So it's helping to solve everybody's problem. At least nobody is hungry. No war. We celebrate us because we want us to help and solve everybody's problem. If you need money, you come here. If you need husband, you come here. If you need long life, good health, anything you want, you come here and then you get it. This is Thanksgiving festival. Thank you for our blessings, for our protection. If not for you, making sure we are not kidnapped. Making sure peace reigns in this city, in this state, in this country. And that's why we come here to say thank you. And it was for more. The Araba Wofu Shugu Land, I Chief Ifaime Lebuiba, has this message for the people on their culture and tradition. My advice to our people 
is not to abandon our culture. Especially Yoruba people. There's no identification if we don't do our tradition and culture. The event, which featured a lot of side attractions, also had in attendance the Ariel of Kakam for Yoruba land, Chief Ganyada, and many foreign tourists, including Daniela, who came from Belgium to witness the festival. It, the, uh, the enthusiasm is uh, really catching. That I was to the greatest festival I've ever been. How long have you been coming to Nigeria? Oh, like uh, twice a year. My daughter lives here, and this is the sixth time I come. While the celebration is underway, some are here to fetch from the river. Addressing journalists at a program shortly after the festival, Chief Ghani Adam emphasized the need for religious tolerance. I think it's time for us to evaluate the situation being leading to various cases of religious crisis and intolerance across the region. From time in Memorial, religion has been a major tool for preaching the gospel of peace, tolerance, and fear of God. In those days, both Muslims and Christians and the traditional belief live in peaceful peace and harmony without fear and threats. Oshoshobo Sacred Grove is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and tourists believe giving the site a first lift is necessary, considering its importance. Rafi Hamid, TVC News. Shows.